Students, families, counselors, good morning or good afternoon, wherever it is in the world you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining StriveScan and Cache's virtual college exploration program. This program is in partnership with Cache, which is the College Admissions Collaborative, highlighting engineering and technology. These are STEM-focused programs that are running through this evening. A few housekeeping items before we begin with today's panel. First and foremost, you're encouraged to ask questions throughout the session via the Q&A button that you see on your screen. When you submit a question, it gets sent to all of our panelists and they'll work to answer the question during the session and at the conclusion of the session as well. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So if you do have any questions, make sure to type them in through the Q&A button. This is one of 50 panel presentations and individual information sessions that we are running through this evening that are STEM focused. We encourage you to go to strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM and check out the rest of the sessions through this evening. We also are starting on Saturday morning with the Colleges That Change Lives, 41 small private liberal arts colleges. And that programming can be found at strivescan.com slash virtual slash CTCL. When you signed up for today, you received a barcode. You do not need that barcode for this virtual event. And we are recording this session and all of the sessions. And the recordings will be made available shortly later today at strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM, the same place you went to register for this event. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our panelists. Thank you so much, Zach. And thank you so much, everybody joining us this morning. Um, hope you're all doing well, staying safe and enjoying all the different virtual options that are out there currently. So my name is Paige. I'm one of 11 different admissions counselors at Clarkson University. Um, we are a small uh, STEM focused university in upstate New York. And I'm here with three other panelists today uh, who are all in the admissions office with me. So again, my name is Paige. My primary territory is Long Island, New Jersey. I also have the North Country region as well as some states out on the West Coast, primarily California, uh, Washington, and Texas. And I will allow our other panelists to introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Kim Keeley, I'm also an admissions counselor at Clarkson. I primarily work with students in the Capital District of New York um, state and um, a few states out west as well, so Idaho and Hawaii. Thanks for joining us. Hello everyone, I'm Chris Miner. I'm also an admissions counselor here at Clarkson, which might be a shocker. Um, I represent the DMV territories of DC, Maryland, Virginia, as well as Delaware and the lower half of Pennsylvania, so Philadelphia and the surrounding counties there and North Carolina, as well as a few other states. Hi, uh, I'm Katie Collette, also an admissions counselor here at Clarkson, and my territory covers Western New York, Western Pennsylvania, and Ohio primarily. <laughs> Go to the next slide, perfect. So a little bit about Clarkson, just to give you a brief introduction. Again, we are in upstate New York, Potsdam, New York to be exact, surrounded by three other universities, all within the North Country region, about 10 or so minutes from our campus. So we have about 3,200 total undergraduate students on our campus, um, 270 undergraduate professors. And the great thing about our courses is that you will have a professor in every single class that you are in, even in your freshman year. Uh, occasionally those will be accompanied by TAs in the classroom to better assist you. And the great thing about being a smaller university is we do have small class sizes, which really allow you to get to know your professors very well. So about 13 to one on average within the classroom. So a little bit of an overview of our admissions process. One thing that is changing this year is we are going test optional. You certainly can submit your SAT or ACT scores, but regardless of if you submit those or not, you will still be eligible for our merit-based scholarship. So we have two primary deadlines for you to always remember. The first is our early decision deadline, which is more of a binding decision. And your application at that time would be due by December 1st. And then with our regular decision, which is where the large majority of our students will end up submitting their applications to us, our deadline is January 15th. And again, those are really the two important deadlines to remember for Clarkson. We do have a separate list of scholarships available on our website that require separate applications, and the deadlines for those will always fall in line with our application deadline. So we will automatically consider you for merit scholarships when applying, um, but again, we have a separate list on our website that you may look through and see that you qualify for some of those additional scholarships. And over 90% of students that apply to Clarkson will apply and receive some type of aid from us. So we do not take the CSS profile, but we do ask that you submit your FAFSA to see if you are um, eligible for any federal-based aid. 
And with that, I will turn it over to Katie. Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the different undergraduate and pre-professional programs that we have to offer here at Clarkson. And the great thing about Clarkson that I will start off with is that if you're interested in multiple areas, we make it very easy to major and minor in multiple areas, double major, double minor. We even have some areas of concentration. So it really gives you an opportunity to sort of create your own unique curriculum based on what you're interested in. So I'm going to start with the School of Arts and Sciences, which by far has the most majors and quite the collection of majors. As you can see here, it has everything from applied math and statistics to your hard sciences. Biomolecular science is kind of a combination of organic chemistry meets biology. So if you're looking for work in forensics, DNA, viruses, things like that, that's a, a really cool major to look at. Computer science, digital arts and sciences is kind of the fine arts meets computer science major. So if you're into game design or virtual reality or computer animation or anything like that, that's really a, a great major to take a look at. Um, history and humanities, people don't always think of that when they think of Clarkson, but we definitely have a very amazing liberal arts and humanities department as well. Psychology is one of those that's very popular on its own, but also as a dual major or minor for a lot of students. And as it says at the bottom, minors and concentrations available, feel free to mix and match. You will have time to meet with your advisor. Another upside of actually being part of a small school is that you will actually get to meet with your advisor and get to know them and they will definitely help guide you on your way. School of Business, which is one of the top ranked programs in the country as far as business programs are concerned, especially when it comes to global supply chain management, which I knew nothing about before I started working here, but really is in demand because it helps you understand from the ground up how a product is mined, made, marketed, and sold. Uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, we have the Ray Center, which is absolutely amazing. If you have an idea for starting your own business or a product, you can go down there and have experts that will help you the entire way along to get your product to market and even meet with investors. So one of the really cool things our business department does for all freshman business majors is like a baby shark tank where you actually form small teams, come up with a business and a plan and then present to an actual real board of investors. It's kind of a really cool, unique opportunity. Um, engineering and management, also one of only a handful, I think three programs in the entire country. It's a dual business and engineering major. So if you want to focus on a specific area of engineering, it may not be the program for you, but if you have an interest in business and engineering, it's a built-in dual major that is nationally accredited on both the business and the engineering side. Engineering, definitely what Clarkson is known for and what the vast majority of our students major in. Um, aeronautical, I will point out, does include aerospace. That's a very popular question. Basically, aeronautical and aerospace, the only difference is applying those concepts into a you know, space environment. Same ideas. Chemical, civil, and environmental engineering is a dual department because they really do go hand in hand very, very well software, computer engineering, pretty much every type of engineering that you could possibly want, we have. Um, I do want to add, because it was just approved, we also now have a four plus one biomedical engineering program. So four years undergrad, five years to get your master's in biomedical engineering. And the labs are really cool. There's a prosthetics lab and they do nanotechnology and all kinds of other really cool stuff. So here's kind of a catch-all. We have our Institute for Sustainable Environment, which also kind of falls under arts and sciences, but has a very specific focus on environment and health. And they also work along with our environmental engineers and various other majors around campus. Uh, they have the Adirondack semester, which is very popular with these students too. Very cool opportunity to get out there and do some hands-on work in the Adirondacks since it's really close by. Um, interdisciplinary programs, I talked about most of them before, um, just kind of a great combination of two different areas that are already built for you, instead of having to do the whole double major, major, double minor, concentrate thing. 
We also have those pre-professional programs. So if you wanna go into dentistry or law or pre-med, or in our case, we all have our own OT, PT and physician assistant programs, also pre-vet program. We will get you as an undergrad on the track to make sure that you have all of the prerequisites, the classes. Um, if you're going pre-med, there's an MCAT preparation group for studying for the exam to make sure that you meet all of the criteria for then going on to grad school. And you will have a special advisor assigned to you for all of that. With patient hours, we have several law firms in the area if you're looking for pre-law where you can also do some internship. Still exploring. This is another thing that I really like and that being a smaller school really gives you a chance to again meet with that advisor. You know you want to go into business, you have no idea what you want to major in, start out business studies, which is a business undeclared. Same thing for engineering, liberal arts, science. And if you just really don't know yet, you haven't narrowed it down, university studies is just general undeclared. You will have one of the best advisors ever to meet with constantly. She will check in with you all the time to make sure that you're on the right track. Do you like this class? Do you not like this class? And she will really help you narrow down what you're looking to do. Most of her students are able to declare a major by like their second semester freshman year. All right, now I believe Kim is going to be talking about some professional experience. Thank you. Uh, so at Clarkson, one of um, the things that sets us apart, I think, from other schools is our um, big push for professional experiences in all majors. Um, so business, engineering, school of arts and sciences, pre-professional, every student, no matter what major, will be required to do some sort of professional experience. And it can be fulfilled by any of these options. Um, so I'll just kind of explain um, the differences between each. Um, so co-ops are essentially students will be gone for six months. They're not taking classes. They're still considered a student at Clarkson, uh, but they're just solely working for a company, um, getting real experience. Um, I always tell students, you're not just filing papers during this time. You're not fetching coffee for people. Um, you're like a real employee um, where you're doing this experience. It's paid as well. Um, you get pretty decent salary um, wherever you're doing this. Um, so that's always pretty exciting for students. Um, and then internships are the same exact thing. They're just a little bit shorter. So an internship would be done um, over the summer months. So it wouldn't be during a semester. You would just go work over the summer. Also paid, also great experience. It's just a little bit shorter. Um, we offer both. Um, it depends on companies, what they offer. Some might do just internships, just co-ops, maybe offer both. Um, internships are also a nice option for students who might not be sure what they want to do and just want to get their feet wet. So just doing it over the summer is a nice option so you're not there quite as long as the co-op. Um, when I mentioned the co-op, um, you students are gone for six months. Um, and like I said, they're not um, taking classes or anything. So those students aren't paying anything to the university. So while they're, they're gone, they're not paying tuition um, or anything like that. So. Um, research is also a professional experience option. So a lot of students are interested in doing that. They're thinking about going on to grad school, med school, whatever it might be. Um, so that's a huge um, part of Clarkson. Students can start research as early as their freshman year. A lot of universities, you have to wait till you're an upperclassman or maybe a grad student. But with us, um, it's hard to not get that experience. Um, so professors will never turn you away. Um, they are excited for students who want to do research. Um, so they'll definitely um, help students get that set up, make sure you're taking the right classes if that's something that you need. Um, students can do a combination of these things. You have to at least do one in order to graduate, but some students will do an internship and research, maybe a co-op and research. I know some students who have done multiple professional experiences and they're able to still graduate within the four four years, um, which is awesome. So really, really great experiences. Um, study abroad is included as well. Um, we do offer that, um, which I'll talk about in a, in a couple minutes, uh, but it is required of our business students. It's open to all students, but it is required for the business majors so that you do get that um, international experience. Um, so. Um, so we do, um, Clarkson students do um, earn one of the highest rates of internships, co-ops, 
and research positions across the US. Um, we were ranked number one for internship experience in the nation a few years ago. Um, so for a small school in Northern New York, pretty impressive stats. So, um, and then next, this is just a little bit about, um, a little bit of, uh, the, to give you an idea of some of the companies that do come recruit our students. This is just a very small sampling. Um, we usually have over 200 companies that do come and recruit students at our college or career fair on campus, which we do have twice a year. Um, so this is just, just a small sampling to give you an idea. So some of the companies, obviously GE, ExxonMobil, um, Polaris, Disney World, and they're recruiting for all majors too. You might think that some of these are just coming for engineering majors or um, business, but they are coming for all majors, computer science, um, psychology, you know, they're, they're recruiting for different parts of their um, business or company, different departments. Um, so no matter what major you're in, there will be lots of companies to meet with on campus. And then um, this is just a photo of our career fair on campus. Um, so it's basically spread out over the entire campus. This is our library area on campus, um, but we'll have companies stuffed into every nook and cranny basically. So in the library, in our hockey arena, student center, um, some of the companies that come, it's not just one table. They might have an entire room with 20 recruiters coming to recruit Clarkson students. So it's a huge day on campus. As you can see, everyone's dressed up walking around with their resume, um, getting these awesome interviews or job offers, even if they're seniors. Um, so they're coming right to campus. So you don't have to go uh, very far to get those experiences. This year, it will be a little bit different. Obviously, we won't be um, having everyone in a space like that. It will be virtual, but it's actually a really cool um, option for our students. The companies will be able to um, do more recruiting almost uh, that way. and. Some companies that might physically not be able to come to campus will be able to take part in this virtual fair. So they might actually have more companies um, partaking in that. So students um, this year will still be able to get those experiences and, and be able to you know, get involved in the career fair even though it won't physically um, be like this this year. And then just some stats that we like to brag about. Um, Clarkson ranks in the top 40 in the country uh, for early career earnings um, and top five in New York State. Our median, sal median salary for alums within the first five years is 64,000. Um, and then our placement rate is usually around 96, 97%, um, which is really awesome. Students within six months of graduating will either have a job in their field, maybe going on to grad school, med school. Um, so definitely um, you know, something that we're really proud of. And then um, one of our favorite stats um, one in every five Clarkson graduates is a CEO, president, um, vice president, um, or owner of their own company. Um, and then, like I said, research is a really big part of Clarkson, um, something that all students can get involved in, no matter what major, um, whether it's science, engineering, our history majors are doing some sort of research. Um, this is a photo I always like to mention of Dr. Jim, we call him. He is a chemistry biomolecular science professor, very well known on campus. He likes to have a lot of fun in his classes. Um, chances are if you come to Clarkson, um, you will take freshman chem with him. And he likes to do these magic shows and really get students um, excited about chemistry. Even if you're not a huge fan of chemistry, most students end up appreciating his class at least. So. <laughs> um, so some of our unique uh, research opportunities on campus, um, we are a top tier nationally ranked research university as I mentioned. We do have seven research centers on campus and 12 labs. Um, I will mention all seven of the research centers um, just so you get an idea of what we do have offered. Um, so I'll just name them off. They have long names, so bear with me. Um, Center for Advanced Materials Processing, Center for Air Resources, Engineering and Sciences, Center for Identification Technology Research, Center for Sustainable Energy Systems, the Shipley Center for Innovation, Center for Rehabilitation, Engineering, Science and Technology, which is a lot of our biomedical engineering research, and then Center for Complex Systems Science. Um, so lots of opportunities to get involved in real hands-on research. 
A couple of our options for research are off campus as well. Um, so the Trudeau, Trudeau Institute um, is popular with our students who are thinking about going on to med school, um, doing research on uh, viruses and vaccines, which is we um, talked about a lot these days. Um, so the Trudeau, Trudeau Institute is located in Saranac Lake, which is about an hour from campus. It's right in the Adirondacks um, near Lake Placid, New York. Um, it's a really beautiful area. Um, so students can go there for a semester, do world-class research on human diseases, really great experience. You can also do research through the Trudeau Institute, but right at Clarkson. So if you wanna stay on campus, keep taking classes, but still get involved in research, there is an option for that as well. So if students are thinking about going on to med school, that really, that experience at the Trudeau Institute will really make them stand out when they're applying for med school. Um, the Beacon Institute is in Beacon, New York, um, which is in Dutchess County, um, just north of New York City. Um, this research is more focused on invasive species, hydrology. Um, they do a lot of field work, um, kind of more like in the environmental um, areas. So, um, so that's a great experience as well that students can do over the summer. Um, they also have a graduate program there that a lot of our students take advantage of. And then as Katie mentioned, with the Adirondack semester, um, this is also in Saranac Lake. So we do have two programs in Saranac Lake. Um, this is very popular for students that are interested in environmental majors or just really love the outdoors. It's open to just about every major. Um, so students will still take classes. It's a 15 credit program. Um, professors from Clarkson will go to Saranac Lake and um, teach the students. Um, you get to do a lot of fun activities in the Adirondacks, um, like whitewater rafting, skiing, hiking. Um, and you do research that relates to some sort of organization within the Adirondacks. Um, so it might have to do with the wilderness, residents in the Adirondacks, um, economics, um, it changes every year. And the students will present their research findings um, at the end of their time during the semester. Um, so it's a really cool program. And then as I mentioned with um, study abroad, um, we do have 55 universities in 28 countries, which we're always adding more and more. Um, unfortunately, study abroad will not be happening this semester, but the plan is hopefully for the spring. Um, so we do um, offer it so students can go for a whole semester. You're still paying Clarkson tuition. Um, and then we do offer a three week trip um, if students don't want to go for a whole semester or maybe they play a sport um, and don't want to be gone for part of the season, they can take advantage of a three week trip where you go with other students and faculty and staff. So it's more faculty led. Um, you tour businesses, companies, kind of see how they do things um, wherever they're located. Um, so really great experience. Um, like I said, your tuition rolls over, financial aid. Um, so it's pretty, it's, a, it's kind of more of like an exchange um, program. So. Um, definitely do it if you come to Clarkson, hopefully. Um, wherever you go, definitely take advantage of study abroad. It's a great experience. And then I will turn it over to Paige. Great, thank you so much. So all of our undergraduate programs are four-year programs and they certainly are not a walk in the park. However, for being a small university, I think our students are always so impressed with everything that we offer on the end of student life. So student life encompasses many different areas ranging from our athletics. We do have 20 athletic teams overall. Um, I believe you can see some examples on the next slide. So our most popular for sure are our D1 men's and women's hockey games. And if you are not um, a fan of hockey before you come to Clarkson, you certainly will be a big fan after you leave. Um, I know I'm always going to the games whenever I have a chance to. And outside of the hockey teams, we do have um, all the rest of our athletic teams as D3 options, which is really great to pair with our majors, doesn't um, get you too overwhelmed, still able to get involved in athletics. And we also have club sport options as well for just about every single one of our D3 offerings and even more. Um, outside of the intramural we also have Greek life on campus. It's about 10% of our student population. And outside of that, tons of different leadership opportunities. I think that Clarkson students, they are natural leaders. So they really enjoy getting involved with our student government, makes a lot of decisions on our campus. Um, they also help to prevent or pre uh, prepare and promote rather um, a bunch of different 
activities and events that we have throughout the year, including our Spring Fest. Um, we also have professional organizations, honor societies, uh, you name it, we pretty much will have it. And it's very easy for our students to also start up clubs while they're on our campus. All it takes is about five students to get together, create a contract, and you have your club going. Um, volunteering is also really big on our campus. So if you are involved in EMT, we have our own service on campus that is uh, led by students and a ton of special events throughout the year. So again, Spring Fest is huge, uh, lots of different concerts, and we do partner with the local SUNY college to offer First Friday uh, for all of our students, or rather First Saturday for all of our students coming into campus. Uh, so that's a bit of an overview of student life altogether. However, I know we have a huge interest in our speed team, so I will turn it over to Chris to talk about what the speed teams are. Hello everyone. So yes, it's time to talk about some serious fun uh, regarding our speed team. So what speed means is student projects for engineering development or experience and design. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. We have 12 different uh, student run teams with the common goal, gaining hands on experience to prepare for the future. Here are some of our teams here. So we have Kem Ekar who placed, uh, who competed in the 2019 American Institute of Chemical Engineers and placed seventh. Um, in an event in March hosted by UMass Amherst of last year. We have Concrete Canoe, which the name is in the title. They built a Concrete Canoe and competed in events for that as well. Steel Bridge, again, is another example of one of our serious speed teams that uh, built the bridge. And First Robotics is, they call it a, a varsity sport for the mind, is one of our most popular um, speed teams here. Design Build Fly is another human powered vehicle, uh, Formula SAE. Uh, Formula SAE Electric, Baja SAE, SAE Clean Snowmobile, Construction Management, and Timber Bridge are some examples of our speed teams here. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, it's open to all students, regardless of major or class year, at no cost to the students. Um, and one of the benefits of joining one of these speed teams here is that students are highly sought after by employers due to their combination of skill, education, and hands-on skill set. Um, if you go to the next slide, please, for how we do it. And so it's gift funded and what that means is that no tuition dollars are used so you're not charged for joining these clubs it's funded by corporate sponsors and individual endowments um so students will you know do fundraisers on campus like set up desks try and sell like roses things like that to raise money for to go on these trips or these events that they're doing it's faculty advised each team has a faculty member to go to for techn technical advice if needed and then it's staff supported so directed by a staff member with 20 years of industrial experience and supported by a machine stop of staff of five made up of journeymen, mechanics, mechanical engineers, and trained technicians as well. Next slide, please. Um, so now we just have some examples of the machine shop capabilities and the training that will come with it. So we have the Haas Super Mini Mill. We have the Mazak Turning Center. Um, next slide. We have the Haas TL1 CNC lathe. We have the Haas TM1 Tool Room Mill. Um, next slide, please. And we have the Haas Mini Mill and the Flow Mop 2 Water Jet. And then next slide. And then these are some of the machine shop training uh, courses. So you'll do these with Rob Davis and some of the other uh, people that are working in the machine shop. So what you have is basic shop safety, basic lathe operations, basic milling operations, CNC machining, basic welding procedures, Intro to Mastercam, Advanced Lathe, CNC Lathe Procedures. And these are the courses are non-credit and include classroom lectures and hands-on lab instruction. And like I said before, these are just to make sure that you're um, learning how to operate the machinery freely. And then after you take these courses, you're able to go into the machine shop as much as you want to work on any projects that you see fit. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here's some more of uh, the machine shop in action. So here we have like the Baja Team Spring Break where this would be a video where they were prepping for one of their trips to compete in these events against other universities. And then the FlowJet in action, which is another video that we can't see at this time. And then if you go to the next slide, please, we can see some of the equipment. So how we roll, some of the equipment that the teams use were the 2019 Chevy Duramax through cab, um, the 2011 Sprinter cargo van, uh, the 2012 Triton, 24 inch enclosed trailer, uh, the 2020 Nitro 24 foot enclosed trailer, and the 2013 12 foot enclosed trailer. Next slide. And then I will pass it back to you. That's me again. Yes. <laughs> 
uh, wanted to talk, you've heard a lot about how there's great advantages to being on a smaller campus when it comes to classes and professors and getting research opportunities and things like that, but there's also a lot of resources for students. The Student Success and the Diversity and Inclusion Office are great supports for students that will help you with anything you need, whether it's just some personal time and a safe place to just kind of go and relax and talk to someone, or if you need help with, you know, a class, then you have those resources. Student Success, I always say make them your friend because it's in the name. They will be there to support you every step of the way. Office of Accessibility, they are the office that is in charge of helping with any sort of services or accommodations that you need. So that could be something coming out of high school or one of our student workers who happened to trip and fall and break her foot, they were able to accommodate her so she could get around for the rest of the semester, uh, including even moving her dorm room. So anything that you need when it comes to accommodations, services, that's an office to turn to, and they're more than happy to help you out. One of the really cool things that Clarkson offers that I wish was available when I went off to college was first year advising. So not only as a first year student will you have a faculty advisor for your major, but you're actually also going to have a first year advisor that's going to work with you individually. So they're going to help you not only on the academic side if necessary, but they're just going to be a great other resource. Whether that's helping you deal with stress, just having another adult who maybe isn't your academic advisor that you are comfortable reaching out to and confiding in, or sometimes if you're from out of the area and you're not familiar, hey, what's a cool place to go? What should I do? Where's a good restaurant? They're just another resource and another place that you can turn during that transition freshman year. Test preparation is another really great service that we offer. So if you're looking to go on to grad school, they will help you with any of your GRE exams, your GMAT. There's also, as I mentioned before, if you're going on to med school, there is an MCAT study and preparation group right now as well. So there's a lot of great resources that are set up for you to succeed. Make sure that you take advantage of them, no matter where you go. And here's just another lovely slide that has a lot of wonderful statistics um, on Clarkson. He said, for a small school tucked away in northern New York, it's top quality professors, top quality programs, and a lot of these little statistics here just kind of attest to that. Uh, you're going to be sent a video and a follow-up email where you'll actually get to hear our students talk about their experiences and why Clarkson um, and why they chose to be Golden Knights. All right, Paige. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. And as Katie mentioned, you will receive an email from us following up. So in case you want to go back and watch anything um, or check out any of the other events going on this week, you'll be able to do that um, as well as check out that really awesome video that we have talking about our Clarkson students. So in closing, we do have a few minutes left for questions. If we don't get to answer your question today, please feel free, email us at admissions at clarkson.edu and we will be sure to get back to you and answer all of your questions. So one that just came in is what is a concentration? So I'll open these questions up to our full panel here. Um, I'm going to call on Kim first if you want to talk about what some of our um, or what the difference is really with concentrations. So basically you have your major um, which you would be taking um, the credits to fulfill your major, which would be like the main area of study. And then minors would be another focus under a major um, that you would take those classes to fill, fulfill the minor. So it wouldn't be like quite as many as a major. Um, we have students who do multiple minors since some of the courses do overlap. So they can kind of pick that stuff up, tailor it towards what they might wanna do um, in the long run for a career. Um, and then concentrations are just like a minor, but not quite as many classes that you have to fulfill for that. So it might be, um, just for example, we have students who are civil engineering majors with a concentration in architectural engineering. Um, so they can kind of pick up those classes if they wanna go into a job that's more 
like architectural engineering. So their major might be in civil engineering, but they at least have um, you know, a background in, in the architectural area. So um, I'm trying to think of some other examples. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, um, you're just kind of tailoring your area of study um, and picking up those few things along the way. Great, thank you so much. So a question came in about the sciences that we offer, including psychology, biology, chemistry, um, and those majors. So with those majors, is there any kind of cap on um, applying and being accepted into those programs? So across the board at Clarkson, we do not have caps on any of our majors. So if you were to enter in as, for example, Katie mentioned science studies, where you're still trying to see maybe what might be the best fit for you. And then from that program, if you were to still able to get into the psychology program, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, or you can declare that immediately when you apply um, and be potentially accepted into that major. So um, completely up to you how you enter into Clarkson. And one question that we have been getting quite frequently is with all the changes going on, um, seems like everything's a bit uncertain these days, is there a plan to open campus for visits this fall? So I'll open this up to our panel here. Um, if, you, if one of you would like to talk a bit about what our campus might look like and what we may be offering in the fall. Yeah, so I can take this one too. Um, so I would first recommend everyone to um, visit our Future Ready um, page on our website. If you go right to the Clark clarkson.edu, um, there's a link for Future Ready with all of our updates for our incoming students, prospective students, any changes, things like that. Um, so as of right now, we are not open for visits. We are hoping to be open um, sometime this fall. Um, we want to make sure that all of our students who are coming to campus this fall and coming freshmen to senior that everything is smooth, um, that all of our students, faculty, staff um, are safe before we do open for visits. Um, so the hope is maybe September, but um, I don't want to say that for sure, just in case. Um, I mean, I hope so for a lot of reasons, uh, but we'll, you know, get that out there once we are able to open for visits. Um, we'll communicate that to um, all the students and families and letting you know how how the visits will be it'll be a little bit different um but you know we're definitely hoping to have people on campus um soon enough um we will have more virtual events which obviously isn't the same as visiting um but you know in the meantime take advantage of as many of those as as you can or want um next best thing right now i guess but um but once we are able to open we'll we'll definitely get the word out so Absolutely. And as Kim mentioned, it is really important, um, you know, to watch your emails for any changes that may occur. Uh, that may occur. Um, we do have a lot of virtual events in the works, so be sure to continue watching your emails. Um, in the meantime, too, we also have virtual parks and chats that are offered, so you can have a one-on-one -on -one visit um, virtually, of course, with your respective admissions counselor. So feel free to email us again at admissions at clarkson.edu if you have any questions about that. So another question that came in, I may turn this one over to Katie. Um, I know she's usually my overnight hosting partner when we do allow overnight visits on campus. Uh, so one question about the housing options at Clarkson for first year students. All right, absolutely. So uh, the majority of our freshmen are housed in what we call the quad. It's a, just ahead of a wonderful series of four dorms that freshmen can live in. If you're an honor student, that changes a little bit. They get their own special housing option. Uh, but you're going to have theme floors, which is, I think, really cool. So if you're in the quad, we have what are called living and learning communities. So as you come in, not only are you going to be on a floor with other freshmen, you're going to have a whole floor of students that have a similar interest, which kind of just helps break the ice. Your RA will also have some wonderful different themes and things and activities that are centered around whatever that learning community theme is. Uh, I believe that the question also mentioned like upper class housing or after freshman housing. Your freshman housing is going to be pretty standard. I think no matter where you go, freshman dorm room kind of looks like a freshman dorm room. Here's, you know, your bed, your desk, your <laughs> built-in closet, all the rest of that, your communal bathroom at the end of the hall. Uh, upper class housing, you have sophomore suite style for us, and then the really, really upper class housing is apartment and townhouse style. So you do get that nice upgrade every year, which is, you know, an advantage for students to stay on campus. And most of our students actually do live on campus for all four years. And I think that's a big part of it. You can still have an apartment with your friends, but 
roll out of bed 10 minutes before class and get there on time. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. And actually kind of going along with that and what the life of um, a freshman may look like, the question was specifically about the daily life of an engineering student, but I think just overall, um, what would you, um, all three of you have to say about what daily life looks like for our students? Yeah, so that's a tough question. <laughs> um, our students are involved in so many different things. It really depends on their track. Um, but just thinking of the students that we kind of work with in our office and see more, more on a daily basis, um, you know, they'll, they have their classes that, you know, it's different from high school. So you won't be sitting there in class all day. Um, you know, you might have class at nine, maybe another one at 11, one. So it's kind of spaced apart. Um, so some students do have on-campus jobs or they might go work in between, um, maybe hit up the gym. Um, or our engineering students, um, for the most part, like Chris said, gone over the speed teams, um, spend a lot of time in those speed labs. Um, so it really depends on what your, your track is. Um, for a daily life, it's really hard to pinpoint um, an average day for our students, um, just because they are doing so many different things, walking into town, going and grabbing coffee, one of our really cute little cafes in town. Um, we have trails on campus that students might walk in between classes as well or bike or, or whatever it might be. Um, so that's, that's a good question. Kind of stumping me right now too. <laughs> um, but it definitely varies, but they're busy, that's for sure. But you know, having fun at the same time. So I don't know if anyone can answer it better than me. <laughs> uh, took the words right out of my mouth, Kim. So. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yes. I would agree. <laughs> They're definitely busy for sure. There's a lot going on. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I, I fully agree with what everybody said. So one other question, I think we have a few more minutes left um, that came in is about some popular research and internship opportunities for students, specifically within aeronautical engineering. But if somebody would like to take that question, uh, maybe talk about some additional um, research and internship opportunities for engineering students altogether. Um, so I, I can take this one because I work with them a bit um, and I'll actually answer both of these. I think I'll do a two for one because these kind of go hand in hand. So the first question is about research and internship opportunities for aeronautical engineers. So the answer to that is that there are plenty of opportunities for internships and research for almost all the majors here because everyone is so involved on campus and the Career Center is very good at getting involved early on. Um, some examples of where aeronautical engineers would go on to work would be like NASA, Lockheed Martin, um, just to name a few examples, GE. So um, like you do have those big name companies that students work at and we also have smaller local or state um, known uh, companies as well that students will go and work for. It's really just dependent on what you're interested in. Um, and that's where the careers, our award-winning career center comes in and they kind of work with you and ask you what you're interested in. Because we do know a lot of the times that students will think they know what they want to do. They want to work at like a Google or NASA and then they'll get there and they won't like it as much. So. That, that's why we require that you do an internship or co-op so that you get that experience to go out there and see, you know, what you're thinking about doing and what you actually have an interest in doing. And then regarding the co-ops, because the student relates to aeronautical engineers because their schedule are the most full. So how do students make up coursework and graduate within four years? And that's usually done with your advisor. Um, they'll work with you beforehand, you know, see where you're at academically. If you really do want to do the co-op, they'll explain. Some students will have to front load, which means you'll take a, a couple more courses and like, the semester before you go co-op or two semesters before you co-op, you'll take a few more courses just to make sure that you're on track for that semester where your tech is allegedly taking off, where you won't be paying tuition and working for six months or so. So just to answer both of those questions, it's possible to do and aeronautical engineers have done it, but it definitely will take a lot of work on your end. And if you work with your advisor and with the, a career center, um, they'll be able to help you get that done. That's great. And time for just one more question. So what are the winters like at Clarkson? I think I'll take on that answer. Um, I've lived in upstate New York my whole life, so I think I've acclimated. Um, so maybe it doesn't bother me as much. But I think, as I said before, hockey is a huge part of our campus culture. So getting involved with opportunities like going to see the hockey games, getting involved in clubs that really deal with the climate around us. So um, two of our most popular clubs, actually the biggest is the Outing Club. They are involved um, in doing everything 
everything from hiking, kayaking, canoeing, um, they usually hold pre-orientation trips as well. And then in the winter, the ski club is actually our second most popular club on campus. So again, I think we are at a great advantage being right outside the Adirondacks, um, gorgeous area of the state that we are living in up here. So uh, winters, they can be cold. My advice is definitely bring a down jacket, some good boots, uh, coat and hat, and I, uh, I think you'll be all set. So in wrapping up again, if anybody has any questions after today's session, feel free to email admissions at clarkson.edu and we'll be able to help you from there. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much to the Clarkson team for sharing this information and students and counselors, thank you for tuning in. As you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear. So we do ask for your feedback on today's session. And as I said, we encourage you to sign up for additional sessions at strivescan.com slash virtual slash STEM. Or if you wish to check out the Colleges That Change Lives programming that starts on Saturday, strivescan.com slash virtual slash CTCL. Thanks everyone, have a great day.